Welcome back, Algebra Express. We are in Marajek 7.1. So today we are going to be multiplying and dividing rational expressions. And so the key word here is rational or ratio or division happening here. So we are going to be multiplying and dividing things that look like fractions. So if we think about adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, if we're doing numbers, it's usually easier to add and subtract than multiply, divide numbers. But if we start doing what fractions, then you might remember it's easier to multiply and divide fractions than to uh, add and subtract fractions. So, like what one third and half multiplied and right. Eight, two, one, six. I multiply the numerator, I multiply the denominator through, and I'm done. But if I do this, I have to find a common denominator. And so in seven one, we will be multiplying, dividing. In the next section, we will be adding and subtracting and talking about how to find a common denominator. But if I do that, I will bottom by the same number so I don't change it. So this section is always going to be about multiplying and dividing. So if we multiply two fractions, we multiply straight through. If we multiply two fractions, we're going to use a copy and done flip. We're going to change it to multiplication. And then we're going to multiply through. Dividing by a half is the same as multiplying by two. Like dividing by two is the same as multiplying by a half. And so if you remember how to multiply and you remember how to divide fractions and you remember how to factor, I think you will get most of the stuff in this section. So now we're going to multiply and divide things that look like polynomials instead of numbers. So now, suppose we're given our f of x looks like x plus 6 over x minus 10. If we want to evaluate f of 7, for f of 7, the 7 is taken. Uh, 7 minus 10 gives me a minus, a minus 13 thirds. And so if we want to evaluate f of 7, what we are doing is we're plugging 7 into the fraction. So the next thing it says is, is evaluate f of 10. I look back at this. Sixteen over what? Zero now. So what is this? This goes back to what? Pizzas and people. But I have no people. So what the heck am I asking? This, is, this doesn't exist. This isn't isn't a thing, right? We're dividing by zero. We're unmaking existence here. Your calculator is going to give you an error if you type that in. That is not a thing. So if we want to find the domain of f, what we really want to think about is domain restrictions. And so we have this thing whenever we have something in a den denominator. What we say is that this denominator cannot be 0. So one of the ways we could have found the domain by asking what makes this denominator zero. Well, if I solve this thing, if I want to know what makes this denominator equals zero, this denominator is x minus 10. To find that out, I set it equal to zero. If I solve this thing, I'm going to add 10 to both sides. I'm going to get x equals 10. So x not be 10 this denominator, or the, the domain, sorry. So if you wanted to tell me this, this is good. 
it should really probably have some more simple ones. Want a new set? It would look something like that. If we want to do interval notation, if we want to go from So we never actually hit the 10. We go like really, really close up to it. Infinitesimal close. Don't actually hit it. And we skip over it. So I think there's two main things that they talk about in this book. And one is that we cannot have zero in the denominator. And these are your two domain restrictions that they talk about. And the other thing is negatives in the square root. If we want to be in the real numbers, we can't put negatives in the square root. So these are the two things that they usually talk about when they talk about what is the domain. These are usually the two things we got to look out for until we start getting to logs. Okay. So now we have a new function. Suppose g of x equals 4x over x minus 2, x minus 1. So we're looking at this. We want to do g of minus 5. So g of minus 5. I hope you're getting this before I'm getting it. 4 times a minus 5. I plug in minus 5 everywhere there is an x in this thing. Minus 5, minus 2, minus 5, minus 1 on the bottom. So I have to plug in the minus 5 everywhere there's an x. The next thing I do is try to do some primitives here. Minus 20, a couple of negative signs, and be careful with that. But 6 times 7 gives me a positive 42. And now I have to be able to reduce things appropriately. If they're even, you can always what, take two out of each of them. So I get minus 10 over one. And I think that might be as much as we can reduce this. 10 is two and five. This is three and seven. So none of those factors seem like they're matching up. So this is the fully reduced fraction. Okay. The next thing, g of two. Oh boy. So if I want to plug in g of two, four times two over two minus. Right away, you might notice like that is because I'm doing. Times one down here. And then all in all, if I have a zero being multiplied, it's going to be zero overall. So this is another one of those undefined, we can't do it. It's dividing by zero, we're unmaking the universe. So this does not exist. Any undefined, something along those lines, it is no good. So we want to find the domain. Okay. How do we find the domain? So the domain is the thing, or the restrictions on the domain is what I should really talk about, is the thing where this is equal to zero. Where is my denominator equal to zero? Well, we can solve for that. So when x minus two and x minus one, zero. So now this is looking very similar to like the factoring stuff that we did before. Each of these equal to zero. We can find one of them as x is two one of them is x is one. So these are the things that make my denominator equal to zero. These are the things that I do not want. So x is not equal to two, x is not equal to one. Which is on my domain. Okay. 
Okay. So you can tell me like that if you want to do interval. We're going to go up to one, skip over to one. We're going to skip over to two. And we can also do this in interval notation if we wanted to. <clears throat> A lot of people when they're doing interval notation, they'll miss out like on this middle set or something silly like that. Okay. Now we're simplifying rational expression. So just like when we simplify a fraction, so if you want to go back to how we simplify numbers, if I have something like, what, 12 sixteenths, I can break this up into what, four and three, up into four and four. And so if I can factor things out, and I can factor things out that are alike, like this four over this four, is everybody's favorite 80s movie? Slasher. You can just slash through them, right? You just slash through these things. You're like, those are the same factor. I can do that. Okay, so. If we can factor things out and we can get, like, the same thing over itself, we can put a slash through it. It simplifies out to one. We're multiplying by one. Guess what? This simplifies to three quarters, right? We multiply by one. It's not doing anything to it. It's keeping it the same. This is x plus 2, x minus 3 over x, and x plus 2. So if they are separated by factoring, by multiplication, we can slash through them. So if you notice anything here that looks alike, And if I simplify this, this rational expression is x minus over x. Okay. In 4.6, we'll talk a little bit about what these things look like graphically and what these things mean. For now, they're just trying to get at simplifying these things. Okay, so we want to simplify this thing. You might notice if you compare and contrast, this looks different from that. We'll talk about it more in a second. Let's do it the wrong way first. So what people really like to do is they'll say, I see you, oh, I see an X squared and an X squared. And I see an X and an X. Okay. I did this math good. No, no, you did not do this math good. This is not the way you want to go about it. If you notice, there is an addition sign between these things. Between these two things that I slashed. There's a multiplication sign. So right away, like it's not even the same operation that's tying these things. And plus, if we have multiple terms, what's really happening is I kind of have a set of parentheses here and I kind of have a set of parentheses down here, right? And so I have to do this addition before I do this division is what this is telling me. I can't separate it sort of like I did with these numbers, right? I can separate these out. I could look at this as four fourths separately from because kind of the way that multiplication works with the fractions. I can actually look at those as like sort of a separate thing that are one by itself. And I'm just left with like the three quarters, right? Similar, similarly here. <clears throat> I could have factored out this x plus two over x plus two. I can factor these things up. They're separated through multiplication, addition, and subtraction, right? Here they're being separated by addition and subtraction. You don't want to just start hacking and slashing things that are separated by addition and subtraction. It's got to be by multiplication. 
And so in order to do this the right way, you might notice this thing is not factored. This thing is factored, this thing is not factored. So yeah, that's what we're gonna wanna do. Oh boy, I did say that factoring would come up again and again and again. So this is x times x plus five. This is, now we gotta do some AC math there to find those magic numbers. We could use a little bit of a shortcut on this one. Bet we get x plus five. <clears throat> okay, so now we're looking at this thing. How do we want to simplify it? We want to look for the same multiple on top that is on bottom. So we're looking at multiple. This is being multiplied. This is a multiple. <clears throat> Anything in a set of parentheses like this is typically going to be multiplying by things, right? So we do the x plus 5 with the x plus 5. Hmm. And so another thing people really like to do, and it's usually with something like this, right? You'll see x minus 3 and an x. They will try to do the same thing here, right? They'll try to hack and slash these two things. We can't do that. This is being subtracted by 3 on top. This is just an x by itself. But because it has the minus 3, we cannot do this. So don't do that. This is still x minus 3, x minus x. So one thing you might notice is like an x with an x minus 3, adding and subtracting just by like even 1, right? By any number is going to completely change your multiple. These things are completely different multiples than these things. Then as an x plus 2 is different from an x minus 3 is different from an x. So that number and what is being added and subtracted with really makes a difference here. Okay. So now we want to simplify these things. So in order to simplify them, what we need to do is we need to factor them. So I'm probably going to jump into the factors fairly quick because we've done spent a pretty good amount of time on factoring things. But this is a difference of squares. If I want to factor it, it's going to look like a 2x and a 3. The one of them looks like 2x plus 3. The other one looks like 2x minus on bottom, I see a 4x squared and a minus 6x. I know both of those things have a 2 and an x in common. If you take out a you see a 2x, you have to have a 2x and a minus Okay. So if I'm looking at the multiples on the bottom, I could kind of probably maybe see that there's like three multiples, but there is a in common with the top and bottom. And so I can simplify these things out. Okay, so I see a 2x plus 3 on top. And I see a 2x on the bottom. So maybe you're looking at what the x's, maybe you're looking at the twos, asking, can I simplify that anymore? The short answer is no. This thing is all like one factor right here, 2x plus 3. That's all on itself. So if I could factor out a 2 from both of these things, maybe I could simplify it out by 2, but I'm not grabbing a 2 out of both of these things. So this 2x is kind of like it's got to be attached to this 3 as one factor. Okay, so I'm not sure what happened with their symbols on this one, but this is supposed to be a multiplication symbol. Why it says that? Maybe someone got crazy and carried away and started using wingdings. I don't know, but this is what we got to work with. Let's do it. So we want to factor this thing. 
We want to factor all these things first. Before we even start multiplying. And we got six. X minus six, so what can we take out? We can take out a six, and that leaves us with X minus one. So that one we can factor three X squared minus three. We want to take a GCF of three out, that's going to leave me with X squared minus one. This is a difference of squares. I can do three X plus one, X minus one. And then X squared minus 16, that's a difference of squares. It's X plus four, X minus four. So let's go and rewrite everything. X plus four, this is three, and then X plus X minus one. And I have a six, and I have an X minus one, and I have an X plus four, like an X minus four. And so if you remember back, and maybe like a simpler example of what one half times like what four thirds or something like that. If we're multiplying these two things and we want to do it kind of simpler, we can actually cross simplify things out. So it's like we're multiplying everything through. If you really want to multiply everything through, you're just like you're multiplying things on top and multiplying things on the bottom, right? It just spreads it out. But if I want to do this a little quicker, I can look here. And I can look here and I can cross simplify common factors, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to end up cross simplifying these things before we multiply them together. It's okay, you can do it here as well, right? You can do it after you multiply things together and you notice they have things in common. But I'm going to probably do this little thing before we even start multiplying it through. Okay, with that said, if we notice things across, or we notice things across, we can simplify them. And if we notice things one over the other, those are also things that we can simplify. We can simplify the same fraction, right? So we want to look across. We see maybe an x plus 4 over here with an x plus 4 over here. I see an x minus 1 with an x minus 1 over here. That looks like everything from here to here. From here to here, that takes care of that. This x plus one is not gonna get simplified. But if I wanna look at what, three with a six. So these are factors, right? It's being attached to everything with multiplication. That wasn't the case with the previous one, if you wanna go back and look at that. But that's how this one's different. It's being attached with multiplication. One simplify three and six, they're both divisible by three. So this is going to be one and two. Uh, okay, so now I got to see what I didn't slash. So now this is where some people mess up. They just like, they go crazy with the slashing and then they can't see what they didn't slash. So we slash this thing. We have a two on top and that looks like the only thing we have left on top because this is gone. I have a one. I don't really need to write that. This is just one time stuff. It's just this stuff. The first stuff I see is x plus one. This is gone. This is gone. I see an x minus four. And so if we factor things and we simplify top to bottom, we can do top to bottom across, we can do top to bottom. Well, I said we can do top to bottom across, we can do top to bottom straight through, right? So either way, you're simplifying one thing on the top, one thing on the bottom. All right, so now we want to factor these next few guys. So this is a student activity, so they're giving it to you. Ooh, 3y squared minus 20y minus 7. Okay, so quick factoring of these things. We should know how to factor it. 
questions about. So if you're having trouble with this, like you should have came and got help like a few class like many, many years ago. But if you're having trouble with this, it is gonna nip you in the bud here. So like uh, it might be nipping you in the flower at this point. We should know how to do these things. So 3y squared minus 20y minus 7. We're going to break these things up. 21y plus 1y plus 7. I'm going to skip a little bit. But if you do box method, you should be able to get this. So I'm going to do these pretty quick, show you how these break up. But we're factoring this thing. We're factoring y squared plus 10y plus 25. This is going to be the perfect square of y plus I would write it out twice if it's a perfect square. Typically, we do write them out twice unless we're doing a square root method of solving something, right? But typically, we do write them out twice. There's 3y plus 1, y plus 7, and we got y squared minus 25. That's the difference of squares, y plus 5, y minus 5. I'm not even going to write that out. 3y squared minus 14y minus 5. I can break this thing up. If I put my variable on there, it might work out a little bit better. But 3y squared, I can break this up into another minus 15 plus 1y minus 5. This is going to give me 3y plus 1 and a y minus 5. So you should be able to do this. I'm giving pretty much everything that you need except for the box or the grouping, right? Okay, so we have these things. We know what their factors are. This is supposed to be multiplication or the crazy I think they have in there, whatever. We're multiplying these two things. Let's write out their factors. This looks like 3y plus 1. This looks like y minus 7. On the bottom, I have y plus 5 and a y minus 5. Over here, this looks like y plus 5 with the y plus 5. Over here, looks like 3y plus 1 and a y minus 5. Okay. You could look up and down if you want. I don't think you're going to get anything. But if we look across, so now we see 3y plus 1. Uh, sometimes you might be able to cheat a little bit if you want to do a guess and check. You, it might help you uh, to kind of guess. Maybe they, they're giving you the same thing, but I would not rely on that because this could be different. If this is a 3y plus 1 and this is like a 3y minus 1, guess what? Just that little sign difference is going to make all the world of difference. So we're looking across. I have a y plus 5 with the y plus 5, and here is what I'm talking about. We have a y plus 5. We have a y minus 5. These are two very different things. You can plug in a number if you want, right? If I do 3 plus 5, that's going to be very different from 3 minus 5. Okay. I think I've slashed everything I can slash here. I don't see anything else that matching up. I see no y minus sevens. I see y no y minus fives. I see a y minus five and a y minus five here. Okay, but these are both on the bottom. So there's not a lot I can do to simplify this thing out. I can do y minus seven, y plus five on top. Y minus five, y minus five on top. Either way, right? I'm not going to make you like go that step. This is perfectly fine. But this is perfectly good too. And if you're looking forward, right, if you're getting a lot of factors, it might be beneficial to start writing those factors to powers. Okay. So if you're moving on to bigger and better things, it might be a good strategy to sort of employ. Ooh. So this is still multiplication. We're still multiplying here. 
We haven't gotten to division. I know they're doing horrible for me. We see 5x squared minus 13x minus 6. That does not look like a rational expression. So this is one of those things, if it doesn't have it, you can always put it. So if you wanted to put this over one and that helps you, that might be a good strategy. But we want to factor these things. All right, so now we want to factor these things. So 5x squared minus 13x minus 6. So again, I'm going to go probably pretty quick over it. We've done a few lessons on factoring. But if I want to look at this, I think I can divide this thing up to 5x squared minus 15x plus 2x. I believe are the magic numbers there. And so if we look at this, this should be 5x plus 2. And I should be getting what? X minus 3. And the other one looks like 5x squared plus 32x minus, oh, plus 12, sorry. And if I break this up, I think I want to break this up into 5x squared plus 30x plus 2x plus 12. This gives me 5x plus 2 and a x minus 3. Ooh, no, so I x plus six. Sorry, wrong one. That's the wrong spot. The x minus three was the previous one. Ooh. This should be five x plus two x plus six. You can also do quick visual checks, right? Five x times x, five x squared plus thirty x. And 2 times x plus 6 gives us 2x plus 12. All right. So we want to multiply these things. We want to write them as factors. So 5x plus 2 and x minus 2 to the top left. This means we want to put it, if we put it over 1, we're multiplying this 3 by, this is, I didn't need to do this. Where's x plus 6, x minus 6? I'm hoping the difference squares come pretty quick. 5x plus 2, x plus 6. 5x plus 2, and we got an x plus 6 down here. Now we're looking across, we're looking up and down. So obviously, I think the first thing is like this 5x plus 2 is probably the thing that jumps out. x minus 3, I don't see anything else. x plus 6. So I have an x plus 6 here, I have an x plus 6 here. And guess what that means? I could have simplified this thing out before I multiplied it, right? But we're simplifying it out. Now let's look at this thing. I have an x minus three and I have an x minus six on top. On bottom, I just have a one. So really, I don't really need to write the, the over one. Everything else is slashed out. I just got one on the bottom. That's just an x minus three, x minus six. All right, the last part is division. And this is so ridiculously similar, similar to multiplication that there's just like, we got to set it up into multiplication and then we're just doing the same thing, right? Literally, we're just doing multiplication after the setup. So we're going to flip the denominator and change the multiplication factor. We're going to change it to multiplication and then do everything else just like we were doing previously with multiplication. So this, if it's being written like this, I really wouldn't write it like that. We got this factor over to x minus 1. Then if we divide this, we got it by 4x squared over 2x. I would write it out um, horizontally like this instead of vertically like a big division bar. Yeah, this thing over this thing, right? So it's like this thing being divided by this thing. And we go back to that scenario of this thing up here, right? If I don't see it over it, I can always write this thing as a fraction over one. And now comes the copy dot flip. When we multiply or divide frac when we divide fractions, 
we copy the first thing. Square minus three x minus three z over two x minus one. To multiplication and we change it to multiplication by reciprocating this thing. 4x squared minus 32x. And you notice I did this first. Don't start factoring things until you do this. You, you got more of a potential to mess up if you start factoring. Change it to multiplication first. Got this thing. It looks like a multiplication problem. It looks like everything else we were doing previously. Just like all of those previous problems now. We want to factor this thing. Uh, right away, I see I can take out a 2. And that's going to leave me with x squared minus 2. I, I took out the 2 and I didn't take out 2. x squared minus 5x minus 24. And then if I take out what? x. Minus eight. And X. I believe what this thing's going to factor in, factor into. Okay. And two X minus one is there. There's not a lot I can do there. Four X squared minus thirty-two. I'm gonna take out a four X. Eight, I believe. Okay, so now we're rewriting the thing factored form. I said this for two, and I have an x minus all over two x minus one. And this is where I factored out four x, and I factored out an x minus eight. This is what is left over. Now I want to play slasher. I look at x minus 8, x minus 8. There is one other thing I can simplify here. It is the constants out in front. So if I look at this 2 versus this 4, I can factor out 2 for both of these things. Now I want to piece this together. What did I not mark out? It looks like on top, I have an x plus 3 left over. My 2 is gone, my x minus 8, my x plus 3 times 1 ain't going to do nothing. On bottom, I have a 2x minus 1. And I'm multiplying this by an x, by a 2, and by the x minus 8 is gone. So just by like my own personal preference, this is all right. But, and typically when I have the constants and the single X's, I typically write those before I write my other crazy looking factors. It's just like to kind of sort things a little bit. This is equally as good. If you gave me this, I would be happy. I think this is more of a convention thing. Both should be equally correct. Okay. We've got two more problems. They are division problems. So they are really just multiplication problems in disguise. So I said it, I would not write it out like this. I would write it out 2x squared minus 2x minus 4. First thing I would do is write it out. I would write these out as the division problems they are horizontally with a division sign. And why am I doing that? So that I can convert it to multiplication.
So I want to put this in on the x squared minus 2x plus 25 goes on top and now the 2x squared minus 13x plus 21 takes the bottom. Oh boy, and now I want to factor these things. Okay, so we're looking at this thing. I want to factor this top, this top left. If I do it, this looks like 2x squared minus 3x minus 14. So if I want to factor this thing, I believe 2x squared minus 3x minus 14, I can break it up into 2x squared plus 4x minus 7x minus 14, which should factor into 2x minus 7 and x plus 2. The other one looks like 2x squared minus 6x. Ooh, sorry, 2x squared minus 13x plus 20. One, sorry. And this is going to separate into minus 6 and a minus 7. And I believe we're going to get 2x minus 7 and an x minus 3. 2x minus 7, and we're going to get an x minus 3. So those look like the two hard things to probably factor in this problem. Now that we come back and look at it, my 2x squared minus 3 minus 14 looks like 2x minus 7 and a x plus 3. x squared minus 25 is, is the difference of squares. x plus 5, x minus 5. I'm multiplying this by. This is a perfect square, so I didn't even really go into that. But that is what? x minus 5 and x minus 5 is what this should be. We get the minus 10 in the middle, and we get plus 25 on the end. The other thing, 2x squared minus 13x plus 21 is factoring into 2x minus 7 and an x minus 3. All right, now it's hack and slash time. 2x minus 7 and 2x minus 7. I have an x plus, no. Yes, I can do this in this one. No, no, no. So what it looks like is I have two things on top that look like x plus 2 and an x minus 5, and then I have an x plus 5 and an x minus 3 left on bottom. And so the looking doesn't look like there's any other common factors there that I can see. Those all look like four different things. I think I'll be all right. That's the final solution. All right, now we get this guy. And again, I don't like the way they have it written. Let's write it 25 is the square minus one over five. And I'm dividing this by 25 z squared plus five z over five z minus one. Okay. Woo. Now I have this thing. It looks a little messy. This one, actually, I think these things will be kind of easy to solve compared to what we see. That thing stays the same. I want to change this division of multiplication. I change it to multiplication by flipping this thing. So now my 5z minus 1 is on top. So 25z squared plus 5z. This is a difference of squares. I can factor things now. I have it in multiplication. 5z plus 1 and 5z minus 1. This is all over 5. I'm multiplying. I have a 5z minus 1. I have 5 and a z I can pull out of this thing. If I pull out 5z, I believe it's going to leave me a 5z plus 1. I got this thing fully factored now. It's hack and slash time. I got a 5z plus 1 and a 5z plus 1. I got a 5z minus 1. There's one over here, but that doesn't do me a lot of good. I have a 5. And I have a 5z on here. So we want to combine things. I have a 5z minus 1 on top. And another 5z minus 1 on top. 
have five. So we can combine and simplify this a little bit. If I wanted to, I could do five z minus one. You don't have to do this. You really should multiply this five times five on the bottom to make it twenty-five. Okay, and I believe that's the last problem we have on these notes. Again, the next section is going to be all about adding and subtracting. So we will still be doing factoring there. Okay, so I will see y'all soon. Take care. Study hard.